got to leave the supercharged, I think it all whole wise thing. I don't think there's any validity to it. I think this is this proves it. Well, and and I was going to compare these two shut-ins. Okay, here we are shut in here at 630 pounds, and and it's fairly, you know, you uh, well, let's do a, do a derivative on this. I'm sure we're going to this. I, I've got a hunch this is one we're going to be able to do a Horner on. We'll change that over to gas. Yeah, see how flat that see how flat that derivative is. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's zoomed way up, but that's this, and this auto scales too, by the way. But, 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 yeah, we, we so we, and and like Bill said, you go back here, and even though we've we've uh, trapped hydrostatic, that 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 uh, there, there we go. Let's go back here and go look at four again or three. Yeah, see, see, it's falling back down to that 630 pounds. It's it's headed it's headed to the same spot that that, that shut in was. I mean, you you can you can kind of follow that down and see it coming about to the same spot. I mean, it's the same pressure, even though even though we're trapping it shut in, that pressure is falling off and turning into the same the same pressure that we saw when we tested the zone the first time. And yeah, and if you get and if you, and if you test a zone that's where you've lost circulation, you're right. You, you're you're exactly right. You're you're going to get back screwed up looking pressures and a whole. What's that? I think if your mud's doing its job, if you've got a low water loss, and if you if you've got that wall cake down there doing its job, see, sealing that off. No, no, no. You're right. I mean, if it does, yeah. If it doesn't do its job, and you and you lose and you lose fluid back into a zone, and and what you're saying is right. The, is you you know because lost circulation would almost be supercharged. You could say one one means the other in a way. Well, I'm not really saying that. You have normal formation fracture, you have permeable formation, say the formation of fracture. You, you, you can drill some of these formations that's been a lower pump rate and also a lower equivalent circulation density and drill right through them. But if you go through there, say you drill 300 gallons per minute, okay? And then you go in there with 500, then you might do the circulation. And many times you will. And it's something you need to know. It's a provincial thing. You know, you have to know what you've got and where you are. Probably would never apply to the wells you're looking at. Well, it, it comes down to how much the fluid. The charge of the curve is what it's that. Well, yeah, but it is measurable or not. It, it, right. It, 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 so, yes, in absolute terms, you're correct, but in normal drilling, where you're lost, you, you, you got mud tank, and you funnel a few barrels of filtrates out of the formation, then you take a few barrels divided by half a million barrels in place, and that's not a measurable amount.
amount, which is what what I'm measuring. So if it's not measurable, then yeah, it's it's a few hundreds of psi supercharged. Well, it's just like yes, we can't measure up on any kind of fluid, a liquid. You know, you you might have 500 pounds on it, and sure, just a few seconds before it comes out. Yeah, but you're you're talking about big reservoirs. Right. They're very small inputs of filters. And those, if we can't measure it, I don't care. But but there are but there are formations that will take that are permeable enough to take enough liquid that it would that you would be measuring when you got to have some three five steps in it. Well I know it's stuff like that. I can say that I've laid it on for several hours. Here's one I want to show shifting gears here. This is a this is a test that I personally ran here a few, well, I guess I ran it on August 22nd of this year. Uh, straddle test, and uh, we kind of had a mess going on. We could tell at the surface that we had something wrong going on. I mean, we had, we had a real surging, erratic, er erratic looking blow. Uh, it went to the bottom of the bucket, and then it decreased back to a 10 inch blow, and and then on the final flow, we had a real surging blow. Um, anyway, uh, when you look at when you look at what happened here, and like I said, it's a straddle test, and this is this is a straddle recorder coming down here, and you can kind of tell that that, that uh, this is an arbuckle test, by the way. So the so the pressure below the packers is probably about the same as what's in the zone. You can see how they almost meet meet here, and then. But then, and, and it's almost completely plugged during the, the initial, I mean, we're, we're, we're here and then we're, we're plugging because, you know, you can tell that's not, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's probably, of those, of that shut-in tool sleeve that I showed you earlier, probably five of the six holes are plugged there. So in essence, this building here, we're not, this isn't fluid being weighed here. This is probably restriction of the tool creating this back pressure. And then finally, the, the second flow because, because the, and the way you can tell this, see how the, the final flow starts out at 250 pounds, so there's no way that this initial flow is valid up, up, up here at this number here. I mean, we called it, that, that's an invalid pressure there. You know, this is, this is just, like I said, 90% plug, but, but things got better during the final flow. We had some, we had some blips here where, the, we, where we were completely plugged and then it, it uh, was able to blow it on through, did it, did it one more time, and then finally the last you know, for the bigger part of this final flow, we were we were getting a, you know a valid a valid flow, but but just notice the difference in how the profiles of these two shut-ins look, and and it's this is even even though we were open this amount of time, uh, my theory is that the reason why this shut-in looks like this is it's almost like we were so plugged here that this almost is this is almost like having that three-minute initial flow. We were we were 90% plugged. And and when in, in, in essence we we that that's why this one builds up and snaps over so fast compared to how this one has got that curve to it and um, so it's just a just another one of those oddities uh, but but it's you know the mechanically everything else worked fine you can tell that the bottom packer held uh, I mean I mean the way, and I'll touch on that a little bit I mean when you run a straddle test as long as your bottom recorder stays up there somewhere around hydrostatic or maybe curves down and then flattens out, everything's fine. If your bottom recorder looks like the other two recorders, then in essence your straddle packer failed and, and then in essence what you've done is you've tested everything from the top packers to TD. And so you've got to take that into consideration that if you had 400 foot of tailpipe and a 50 foot of anchor and the bottom packer failed, well you, you tested all 450 foot of that hole and so you don't know whether you don't know where anything came from. You don't know where the pressures came from. You don't. It's like that bottom packer wasn't even there. It failed. It's 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 not there. So, so keep that keep that in mind if you ever run a straddle and have it look like the other ones.